Lawyers, what was your oh crap moment in court? Story one. I was prosecuting a contempt action in family court, something that basically never works, and everyone in the room could tell I was winning. The other side was unprepared, out of arrogance, and I was basically ripping this guy to shreds on cross-examination, which his lawyer didn't think would happen because he expected the case to be dismissed. At the end of the trial, the judge ruled for me and stated that she found the defendant's testimony to be untrustworthy. I was shocked at winning a contempt trial to begin with, but then this conversation happened. Defendant's attorney, Your Honor, now that you have found my client's testimony to be untrustworthy, I am requesting a continuance in order to prepare for their witnesses. This concept is shocking in and of itself because to even think you can bring more witnesses after you rest your case is laughable. Judge, you had your shot and you missed, counsel. Defendant's attorney, Your Honor, there was no way I could have anticipated that you'd find my client's testimony untrustworthy and as such... I didn't have the opportunity to prepare other witnesses in support of his position. Judge, that may be an argument for your career, counsel, but it holds no water with me. See you this afternoon for sentencing. For those who didn't pick up on it, the judge basically told the lawyer on the record in front of his client that she expects him to get sued for malpractice because he messed up so royally. That thing was mind-blowing on multiple levels. That lawyer was burnt to a crisp, but I don't know what's worse, being that lawyer or the client who just witnessed their whole case go up in flames. Story 2. I was the defendant representing a nonprofit that I volunteered for. The plaintiff was a 60-something grandma who was seeking a retirement settlement after falling out of her jacked-up pickup truck in our parking lot. Her case's premise was that our parking lot was in bad shape, it was, and that she fell into a pothole breaking her leg. This led her to take Coumadin and affected her enjoyment of salads at the Friday night fish fry. No, really. Everything was going smoothly until my lawyer presented a photo of the pothole taken the day of the incident, filled to the brim with water after a recent rain. He asked the lady if she had gotten her foot wet, to which she replied that she couldn't recall. He probed further, suggesting that if her foot wasn't wet, perhaps it was because she fell out of the truck and didn't actually fall into the pothole. He repeated the question about her foot being wet and she confirmed that indeed her foot was wet. The oh crap moment arrived when he returned to his desk, flipped through her deposition and read the section where she vehemently denied her foot being wet. Then, employing some legal maneuvering, the case was dismissed and I returned to work. Story 3. The best oh crap moments arise when your opposing counsel or opposing client says or does something that ends up winning the case for you. Granted, in civil cases, the outcome is usually anticipated, but in my state, discovery in smaller civil cases is more limited, and clients don't always prefer spending $30,000 when the same result can be achieved for $10,000. In an adverse possession case, the pivotal witness needed to assert, I use that area as my backyard. I was fully anticipating this kind of statement, which I believe would harm my case, but knew I could navigate around it. However, when asked about his use of the area, he replied, No, I never really went back there, didn't use it at all. This response turned the case against the other side and I could barely maintain a straight face. It contradicted what the witness had informally conveyed to opposing counsel off the record. Evidently, the under penalty of perjury aspect compelled him to change his story. Another case involved losing multi-unit dwelling insurance due to a guy's place being a fire hazard. I queried if his personal insurer knew about the fire hazard. His response, yeah, and the jerks canceled my policy. I also relish moments when a difficult party on the opposing side faces a stern reprimand from the judge. The plaintiff's behavior was atrocious in a convoluted case involving multiple parties over essentially nothing. While six or seven attorneys were coordinating calendars with the judge, the plaintiff began yelling at her attorney from across the courtroom because she disagreed with his concession on a minor non-issue. The judge promptly directed her to sit down and cease speaking. I regretted that the case was settled because she would have made quite an impression on the stand. Story 4. A new judge, quite stern, and the plaintiff had called me for an adjournment on a summary judgment motion I had filed, seeking more time to submit opposition. I was fine with it, but the court insisted on the request being made in person the next day. I appeared, but the plaintiff didn't. When her case was called, I requested the adjournment. The judge exploded, demanding to know why, insisting he didn't grant adjournments, and basically vented for no reason in a courtroom packed with attorneys. 
I explained it was at the plaintiff's request, but they were absent and needed more time. He brushed it off, denied the request, and instructed me to call the plaintiff to arrive by the second call. My oh crap moment, winning the case because the judge decided to be difficult. I informed the plaintiff and they panicked. They were on the verge of losing. The judge had to grant my unopposed motion. When the case was called again, I was the only attorney present. With a smirk, I approached the defendant's table and declared, Your Honor, I represented the defendants with an unopposed summary judgment motion. Those who witnessed me being berated realized my strategy. Being scolded was actually a win. The judge, now cornered, softened and revisited my request, ultimately granting it. Follow-up, the plaintiff's client passed away and the motion remained unopposed and unheard. When they tried to revive the case, I reminded them that my motion would be the first to be heard. Realizing their slim chances, they discontinued against my client without ever having to argue the motion. Dude, the judge's meltdown basically handed this lawyer an epic win. Story 5. I was interning in law school, handling DV cases. During a guy's arraignment for hurting his wife, the deputy DA asked me to speak for the first time. An arraignment is when the defendant learns the charges and pleads guilty or not guilty. When the judge called on me, my nerves got the better of me. I mistakenly stated that his charge carried a maximum penalty of 30 years instead of 30 days. He panicked and the crowd, some of whom were his family and friends, gasped. The judge promptly corrected me, saying, I think you mean 30 days, counselor. Cue laughter from everyone, including the defendant. To clarify concerns, the evidence was weak and the facts didn't support anything beyond the lowest level misdemeanor. Given this was a first offense, our primary focus was counseling, anger management classes, and probation. The goal was to prevent future issues. Harsher punishment would be reserved for any potential subsequent incidents, hopefully backed by better facts or evidence. Story 6. Not a lawyer, but I had a big oh crap moment. I was in court for driving while suspended in a county known for putting people who did that in jail. My license wasn't supposed to be suspended, and an administrative error caused it to remain suspended even after the designated time had passed. Despite having proof of this, I was extremely nervous. The person who appeared before the judge just before me walked to our standing table, sat down, and put his feet up. When the judge questioned the person, he gave a flippant response and basically insulted him. This, of course, naturally greatly angered the judge. He chastised the individual, but the man continued to provoke him. Consequently, the judge held him in contempt and had the bailiff cuff him, placing him aside to wait transport to jail. Then it was my turn. The judge eyed me like a predator, and in my head I was thinking, if this judge puts you in jail, make a beeline for the guy who angered him. He's the reason you might end up in jail. The judge looked at his paperwork and back at me, asking, You're Mr. Last Name? I replied, Yes, sir. He said, Ah, we were discussing your case earlier. I'm going to void your arrest and dismiss this case. Your license was supposed to be valid and you shouldn't have to be here. I then let out a huge sigh of relief. The judge noticed and asked if I was all right. I confessed I'd been worried, especially considering the guy right before me. The judge reassured me, saying, Don't worry about him. He won't be seeing anything but bars for about 90 days. And Then he chuckled. Story 7 I think this qualifies, though I wasn't the lawyer involved. I was summoned for jury duty and reached the jury selection phase where they asked if anyone here thinks they should not, and so on. The defendant was present. I raised my hand. The defending lawyer glanced at me, seemingly intrigued, and asked me to explain. I requested to discuss it in private, but he insisted I share it in the courtroom. So I began. Okay, I probably shouldn't be on this jury because I previously served on a jury for this man that returned a guilty verdict. The lawyer's expression turned to an oh crap moment. There was a commotion and a pause while they checked records. It was confirmed the whole jury was now considered tainted. Everyone was dismissed and the process had to restart. Well, that's an epic fail. I guess someone got caught sleeping on the job and chose the wrong people to be in that jury. Story 8. I found myself tangled in a messy custody case where the other party was creating chaos, withholding the child from my client for weeks. The opposing party was causing delays, playing games, and requesting continuances. Seeking clarity, I requested a substance test, which the judge approved. However, during the test, the opposing party claimed an inability to produce whiz despite being present for two hours. Representing the plaintiff, I bore the burden. I presented multiple witnesses who testified about the defendant's substance use. Then, opposing counsel took an interesting turn by directly asking their client, you don't use illegal substances, right? For anyone not versed in legal matters, that's an incredibly foolish question for numerous reasons, especially considering the defendant's absence during the test. 
Yet, I anticipated the defendant would simply deny using any. However, what happened next stunned me. The defendant admitting to using both substances. It was a moment that nearly blew my mind. I refrained from further cross-examination to avoid complicating matters. And in the end, I emerged victorious and the child is now in a much better place. Story 9. I wasn't a lawyer, but I worked at the jail and witnessed a startling turn of events. An inmate returned from court and immediately went on self-harm watch. Initially facing just a six-month sentence through a plea deal, he started questioning some facts during the proceedings. Surprisingly, his queries opened a floodgate of previously denied evidence. This new information tied him to six breaking and entering cases and gender-related offenses. He left the courtroom now, facing a 99-year sentence, an outcome he felt was inevitable, all because he spoke up. The lawyers were embroiled in a dispute over a pair of the victim's undergarments. Inadvertently, he interjected with information he should not have known. This seemingly innocent remark led to the admission of evidence previously deemed inadmissible, not only in this particular case, but also in five others. According to the transport officers, this evidence was substantial enough to essentially seal his fate for a whole century. Story 10. During the courtroom questioning, do you see the defendant here in court, scanning the jury and audience, the witness responded with a confident, nope. At that moment, even the judge couldn't help but hide behind a file folder. Attempting to guide the witness, I suggested, are you sure? Perhaps on this side? The witness seemed uncertain, replying, I'm not sure. I tried to direct attention by pointing, maybe over at this table by that lawyer. Eventually, after some back and forth, the witness tentatively agreed, yeah, maybe. It's worth noting the defendant and witness were well acquainted. Despite my attempts to prompt recognition by using the defendant's name and positioning him plainly within view from the witness stand, nervousness seemed to hinder the witness's identification, likely due to their prior relationship. Admittedly, my questions were notably leading, a tactic my opposing counsel was content with, hoping to instill apathy in the jury's minds. Dude, that witness suddenly had a stroke of amnesia or something. I'm not sure if the jury appreciated the show, though. If you like my tales about courtroom drama and epic fails, please do click on that subscribe button to my channel for even more. It really does help us out. Let's go ahead and get back to the stories. Story 11. I'm not a lawyer, but I once served as a character witness for our family dog in a civil trial involving our neighbors and my parents. During the questioning by the opposing counsel, despite being of elementary school age at the time, I was asked if our Rottweiler was aggressive. Truth be told, she was incredibly loving and fiercely protective of my siblings and me. However, the most memorable part was the lawyer's final question. He asked, Did your father tell you what to say before he came into court today? I calmly replied, Yes. Then he pressed, What did he tell you to say? And I simply answered, The truth. Although I was too young to remember the courtroom's reaction, my father later recounted that the judge audibly chuckled and the opposing counsel seemed to lose all momentum. Story 12. We were all waiting due to some delay when, in a matter of about five minutes, roughly eight heavily armored sheriff's deputies entered the room quietly, signaling for everyone to stay perfectly still until instructed otherwise. Shortly after, three officers escorted the defendant in, a small Italian-American gentleman in shackles, facing several rather mundane fraud charges. It seemed like he had friends on the outside keen to speak with him. On another note, there was this guy who mistakenly referred to the male judge as ma'am. It was quite a funny moment. Story 13. Not exactly an oh crap moment in a bad way, more like an oh crap, I can't believe she said that. It was my first jury trial and the charges were quite serious. During my cross-examination of the alleged victim, she casually said, oh yeah, I lie all the time. Needless to say, I won that trial. Story 14. This story was from a friend of mine. He was defending a guy in court, and I don't remember what he was charged with. The main witness for the prosecution was on the stand and was asked if she could identify the defendant. She was scanning the courtroom and seemed confused. My friend was already silently celebrating because if she could not identify him, he could probably get all charges dropped. As he was mentally adding this case to the win file, he happened to glance over at his client who had just helpfully raised his hand to make it easier for her to identify him. Even the judge face-palmed on that one. Nice! That client just gave the prosecution an assist that was unasked for and totally unnecessary. Story 15. Not in court, but during a deposition. The plaintiff in a case involving a woman who was violated, suspected to be paid role-play with her boss, kept a very detailed intimate diary on her work computer. 
At one point, she was asked to read from the diary for the record and asked if she had written the accounts and if they were true. She was asked at several points if she wanted her new husband to leave the room while she did this, but declined. Let's just say it was extremely explicit. She confirmed it was true, and the only mention of her now husband was that he was boring in bed, but she was going to marry him because she couldn't get her first, second, or third choice. He ended up leaving on his own after she read that part out and confirmed it was him she was writing about. Story 16. I was just interning in court during law school, but I'm a lawyer now. And there was a fight in a club. Someone had broken someone else's jaw and had six friends with him, insisting he had been wrongly identified because he never had a beard, and the victim said he had a beard. They used a very specific phrasing along the lines of my friend doesn't have facial hair because he's a professional in the food industry and it would go against the regulations. After three of the witnesses repeated the same exact phrasing, the judge stopped one to ask if he knew what a couple of the terms in that line meant and the witness couldn't explain it. The defense lawyer got busted for instructing the witnesses. She'd also gotten the defendant to reject a plea deal that exchanged prison time for a fine and community service. Story 17 I was at a hearing arguing that my client was wrongfully terminated because the employer failed to abide by the proper procedures. During the hearing, a witness for the employer tried to offer documents that were fraudulently altered to make it look like the proper procedure was followed. I noticed the alteration and the opposing counsel quickly got that witness out of the room. After a quick adjournment, my client received a very large settlement. Story 18 I was the one who almost made a huge mistake. I had two charges in two different courts. I accepted the first plea, which typically includes probation, but my plea didn't have that condition. When it was time to accept the second plea, the prosecutor did include probation because she assumed my first charge had put me on probation. She mentioned it to the judge and almost being a big dummy, I almost corrected her. Thankfully, my lawyer grabbed my shoulder and, I kid you not, told me to shut the hell up, she doesn't know. Talk about a close call, his lawyer saved his own bacon right there. Story 19 Opposing counsel was a nightmare. Everything was late, his work was extremely subpar, and so forth. He accused me of lying multiple times when he was the one who dropped the ball. During another hearing where he made yet another mistake, the judge actually said, I'm glad you're the last case on the call and all the other attorneys have left the room, so they aren't here to hear me say that you're a terrible attorney. Story 20 Never ask a question if you don't know the answer. The prosecutor suggested to my client that the canned goods he had burglared were for trading purposes. Thinking the idea was absurd, I asked my client if he had ever traded food for substances. He replied that he once exchanged a frozen chicken for a kicker. Needless to say, that didn't go too well for us. So yeah, family court hearings are tough because there's rarely a chance to predict how a witness will testify. It's challenging legally because you can't tell them what to say, but you can go over quote-unquote hypothetical questions the prosecutor might ask and gauge their potential responses. Story 21. I'm not an attorney, but as a reporter covering the county courthouse, I've witnessed numerous remarkable moments. In one case, a man was convicted of attempting to eliminate several police officers. During his sentencing, the prosecutor disclosed that the defendant had gotten a prison tattoo while awaiting sentencing. This tattoo depicted a tombstone in gray with the names of all the officers he tried to wipe out. Despite this, the defendant had the audacity to plead for a lenient sentence. He was ultimately sentenced to several hundred years in jail. The dude got a tattoo that basically screamed out loud, Guilty! Story 22 I was in the public gallery at a bail hearing for a man accused of awful crimes against a very young female relative. The judge began outlining the bail conditions, including surrendering his passport. The man turned to his attorney and loudly exclaimed something like, But you said I could fly back to my home country. Instantly, the judge halted and revoked the man's bail. Story 23. Not exactly in court, but I was defending a juvenile robbery case with very little evidence. Initially, two guys were involved, but only one kid was picked up. He had no stolen property and was found outside his own house, wearing different clothes from what the victim had described. This kid was on the honor roll at school, his family seemed kind and involved, and he wrote poetry and played instruments. I really believed it was just a case of mistaken identity. I arranged to meet one of the kid's mentors for a character reference, and he matched the exact description of the other robber. Well, it turns out the honor roll kid was indeed involved in the robbery. I should have mentioned the mentor had very specific distinguishing features, making it unlikely to be a coincidence. Story 24 Sitting in court, filling out some plea paperwork with a defense attorney for a go-home plea agreement, 
when a person is released from custody without jail time, we suddenly hear this to our left. We look over to see this guy sitting in the gallery all by himself, engulfed in the biggest vape hit I have ever seen. Then he has the audacity to tell the judge, it went off in his hand. No chance to pass go, no chance to go free that day. Story 25. As a lawyer, I had a pretrial conference scheduled for 9 a.m. at a court located about two hours away. I woke up early, braved terrible weather conditions during my drive, and arrived at the court. We were waiting for the other attorney who was based in town, and all this time I was silently griping about being from out of town yet managing to arrive on time. Eventually, the court reached out to the other attorney's office and was met with a receptionist in tears. Shockingly, the news came through that the other attorney had passed away the night before. Needless to say, I was just grateful to still be alive. We rescheduled the conference for a few months later. Story 26. I knew a lawyer who was in court for a work injury case. The judge asked his client, what's the nature of your injury? The client replied, I can't raise my arm this high anymore, while demonstrating by lifting her arm to show the limited range. I bet his lawyer was face palming so hard after that little stunt. Hey, are you ready for another crazy story about lawyers and their clients? Then stay tuned for Lawyers, when I realized my client was a monster. Story number three is seriously creepy. Make sure you don't miss it. And thank you for watching this video.